Hey, I'm Grant with Grant's Game Rex. Every year, I do a number of category videos for my top 10 games of the year in various different categories. And I've always done a top small box games of the year video, but this year I am adding a category, the top card games of the year. I've never done this video before, and I felt like I had to add it this year because quite frankly, there have been so many good card games in 2023. This feels like the year of the card game in some sense to me. I love card games because I play a lot of games with non-gamers, a lot of games with casual gamers, and card games feel like a great way to bring people into the world of modern games. You know, because everybody grew up, whether you're in the games or not, everybody played Go Fish or Hearts or Crazy Eights or Euchre or what have you growing up. Everybody knows some of those sort of classic 52 card games. And so these lists of card games are great, great way to be like, hey, you've played that sort of stuff. Well, let's transition into the world of modern board games with these card games that feel a little bit different than just your classic 52 card game. And so I'm just really happy. I can guarantee you all 10 of these games are going to stay in my collection for a long time because they're both great games and they're small box little games that are easy to take anywhere. I'll be bringing a bunch of these like home for the holidays with me because I think my family will really like a lot of these. So yeah, um, I'll also be doing a top small box games of the year video, but those will be, you know, games that aren't just card games. They have dice, they have boards, things like that, even though they're still in a in a small box. So all of these games here are pretty much just cards and they're all great. So these are my top 10 card games of 2023. Hey! My number 10 is Splitto. Uh, this plays up to eight players and it's definitely a game I wanna play at a higher player count. I think this is a great convention game. This is a great game to pull out at the end of the night at game night when you have a bunch of people over. In the game, you are drafting cards and playing cards into a pile on your right or a pile on your left. And those two piles are going to score you points. And the winner of the game is the person who has the collective highest points between their two piles. So you are working together with the player on your right and the player on your left to make sure that both of your piles are, you know, have points in them. And so you are just drafting cards and some of the cards are going to be numbered or color cards and some of the cards are going to be point cards that say like, you're gonna get three points if you have the most yellow cards in your point pile, things like that. So it's it's really simple and it's really, uh, you know, quick playing because it's just draft, play a card, pass, draft, play a card, pass. But that consideration of like, oh, I've played a bunch of things over here. I really need to focus on this pile now is, is really fun. And that's why I say I think it's probably a better game at higher player counts because, you know, if it's just three people, it's like, all right, okay, we're all kind of like do it. We're just passing between each other. It feels weird. But, you know, playing it at five, six, seven, eight is is a lot of fun. Uh, and so, yeah, it's just a quick, quick playing card game about drafting cards and playing cards into piles between you and another player. Number nine is Fruto Play. This was an Essen release, and I don't know if it's fully available in the United States uh, yet, but it will be soon. So Fruto Play is a quick playing trick taking game, but the unique aspect of it is you have cards out in this sort of central row and to win a trick, you have to play a card that is closest to the card that is in that row for that sort of turn. We go through the cards that are in that row, and so to win the trick, you have to play something that's closest to the card that is sort of up for bid right now. And so you gotta play uh, on suit if you can, and you gotta be closest to the number. So if, you know, if it's a, a, a 10 apple there and someone else plays a 12 apple and I play a 13 apple, I lose because the 12 is closer to the 10. And so it's a really interesting game because you can see the cards that are going to sort of, uh, you know, be the trick card. Um, coming so you can kind of plan out your hand of like okay I want to lose this one because I want to try to win that one 
coming up a few cards from now. And then at the end of the round, you multiply your type of fruit with the most cards with your type of fruit with the least cards. Uh, and so you can even like screw someone else over where you're like, I'm going to lose this trick and I'm going to put a banana in there because they don't have a banana and that's going to mess up their whole plan because I think they're trying to win this one. And so, you know, it's just a fun, there's definitely a little bit of take that in the game with trying to like stick people with a fruit they don't currently have so that they mul their multiplier is like by multiplied by one instead of multiplied by four which was your next smallest amount of fruit and so uh but you know i just like that dynamic of being able to see what is coming up what you need to like get close to to win a trick it's a really fun quick playing trick taking game that feels unique in the world of trick taking games my number eight is snarkus this really feels like a classic card game. You are playing cards, there is a row of cards, and you are simply playing a card out of your hand. Uh, if you match one of the cards or multiple of the cards by value that is in the row, you get that card. Or also, you can play a card, and if there are multiple cards that add up to the card that you've played, then you get multiple cards out of the market, out of the row. So I put down a seven, there's a three and a four, I get both of those there. Uh, and the cool, the like interesting aspect of the game is that if you can clear the whole row, if you can take all of the cards that are out there, then you get an extra 10 point bonus card. Uh, and so that, you know, that's a huge amount of points in this game. So, oh, there's a, there's a three, a six and a nine in the row. I've played a nine. Well, that takes the nine cause it matches and the three and the six add up to nine. Boom. I just cleared the row. I get a bunch of extra points. And the other thing that makes it interesting is because you will make choices because you're like, oh, if I take both of those cards, there's only one card left in the row, which sets the next person up. If they have a card that matches that one, they're getting a 10 point bonus. So I don't want to do that. I don't want to take these two cards right now and then potentially make it easy for them to clear the row. That's the interesting like aspect of the game. Um, so yeah, I really like Snarkus. Uh, you know, another quick playing card game. Number seven also feels like a classic card game. It's Romy Rammy. Uh, this, I mean, a lot of these games on this list are pretty big surprises. You know, games that I didn't really know about going into the year. Games that I wasn't highly anticipating or anything like that. And that just caught me off guard how much I liked them. Romy Rami, the box cover doesn't say a lot to me. And I don't know if I would have played this game if it wasn't for sitting down with some friends at Gen Con that were like, hey, check this out. And I was like, oh, wow, I really love this game. Um, this feels like a classic sort of rummy card game where you are playing things in pairs or runs or sets and that sort of stuff. But there are multiple objective cards that are, are available. And so there is cards in a market, and when you draft cards into your hand from that market, you can draft things all of one suit or all of one number, and then you are trying to fulfill objectives on cards to get those cards for points. You know, oh, this card, I need to play two pairs and, and three of a kind. If I can do a two of a kind and a three of a kind, I get that scoring objective. Or if I can play five numbers in a run, I get that objective card. And so you're just constantly trying to draft the right cards so that you can play things to accomplish objectives for points. And there's a lot of different objective cards in the game. So, you know, it's it's constantly changing what you're trying to go for. And, you know, it's just, it feels, uh, feels like a classic card game where you're playing stuff in number or suit, but there's enough sort of different uh, objective cards, different stuff like that, that it feels like a modern twist on a classic card game. Another game that feels like a classic card game is Gap. Uh, this is a game where everything just has a number and a suit. There's no specialness about the cards, except they're very shiny and foiled. Um, but you are, you're never drawing any cards in this game. You are simply playing a card from your hand, 
and then you are getting something out of the market row that either matches that number that you played, or if there's nothing that matches it, you can get a number that is one off. I played a seven, I can take the eight or the six that is in the row. And you are simply trying to create the biggest gap between the sets of cards that you have at the end of the round. So, oh, I have six red cards and one green card, I'm scoring five points because the gap there between six and one is five. And so uh, this is one I've brought to a lot of restaurants and things like that. You can play uh, hands of it. And, you know, there's in the rule book, there's like, you know, you for a short game, you can play to this amount of points. And for a medium game, play this amount of points. But it's one of those things where it's like, you can play a single hand, have a good time, or play 20 hands and have a good time. And there doesn't have to be sort of a set ending to the game, which makes makes it really good for restaurants and things like that because you're like, oh, the food's here. Okay, well, you win, I guess, you know, that sort of thing. And it's just a fun sort of trying to figure out how you can gamble to get the biggest sets versus the small sets. One of the cool things about the game too is if you can get two sets of cards suits that have the same amount of cards in them, you add them up. Oh, I've got four and four here. And so if I can end the round with four and four, then I'm getting eight points. But that's this really fun push your luck aspect because by the last round of the game, if I get stuck with something and oh no, I have four and three instead of four and four, now I'm scoring one point instead of eight points because it, I just like that aspect of like trying to like, ooh, I'm going to go for it. And then it doesn't always work out for sure. So that's gap. Number five is stool pigeons. When I was a kid growing up, my younger sister and I played a lot of card games. And one of the games we played the most was a game called golf. And golf, I've heard called by a bunch of different names, so I don't know if that's what you call it, but it's the game where you have some cards in front of you, you can't look at the cards at the start of the round, but if you have the least value in cards in front of you, you, you can try to go out first and try to have the least value in car of, of cards in front of you. And Stool Pigeons is like that game is like golf where you have some face down cards in front of you and you can't see everything, but it's like that game with player interaction because you there are pigeon cards that give you special abilities and those special abilities allow you to look at other players' cards. It allows you to swap cards with another player. And if somebody puts a card down on the discard pile and you have a card that matches it, you can quickly put your card down in the discard pile as well. But if you're wrong, then you have to take a penalty card in front of you. So it's basically just like golf, but with silly pigeon artwork and more interaction between the players. And I really like that. I like being able to sort of, oh, uh, you know, try to screw, try to mess with other people. And, you know, a round of this can be like five minutes. And so you just play a bunch of rounds back to back and it's really fun. So Stool Pigeons is a great game that reminds me of the classic game golf. Uh, number four here is Regroup Chicken Army, which is a very silly name and a very fun game. Um, there have been games in the past that do a thing where you play a card and then the next card that you play has to cover up part of the card that you already have in your tableau. And this does that, you know, each card has sort of four sections on it. And when you play a card, you're welcome to cover up two sections of a card you've played. You're welcome to cover up all four sections. You're welcome to cover up a single section. And so you are sort of puzzling down the cards that you play. And then we all just attack each other and defend each other kind of at the same time. You're just swinging at everybody trying to be the last player standing. And so when you're playing cards down into your grid in front of you, you are trying to create areas of physical attack, of magical uh, def attack. You're trying to create uh, areas of physical defense and magical defense. And you only get those areas if they sort of all align. If, they, if you create a grouping of them, oh, I've got four 
uh, physical attack right here because I've got all of them in a group. Uh, and so you just kind of have to decide, like, am I going all out and trying to attack? Am I trying to defend? Am I, what am I trying to do here? Oh, I have a lot of physical attack, but you have a lot of physical defense. So, oh, I screwed up. I should have gone for magical attack. And it, it's just a fun little puzzle of trying to create groupings of those icons and then just hitting each other over and over. And, uh, you know, again, this is one that I had no, I'd never heard of this. And I've told people about this one and most people haven't heard of it, but it is a crazy small box, just super fun, beat you up card game and plays in 15, 20 minutes. Yes, there is a uh, player elimination, but again, the game plays so fast that if you get eliminated, you're eliminated for like three minutes before the game is over and then you can play another game of it. So re regroup chicken army and it's full of like very silly artwork, these kind of wacky chickens and stuff like that. So it always makes me giggle looking at the artwork too. Number three on my list of the top card games of 2023 is Kiri the Duel. This was also on my top two player only games uh, of the year list. And uh, as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, I will have some crossover between things, but I largely try to keep them separate and you won't see a, a, a game on more than like two of these category videos. But Kiri Eye of the Duel is a really fun two player only head to head combat game. You are samurais on a battlefield and you are moving forward and backward on the battlefield trying to strike your opponent. And it's very clever uh, because you have two stances. You can strike from a high stance or a low stance, but you have to switch your stances to use particular cards, you know? Oh, I have this card that's gonna be great right now, but I'm in a high stance, so I gotta switch to a low stance before I can use that. And it's one of those games where you're just, it's all about trying to, outfox your opponent, outsmart your opponent, you know? Oh, I think they're gonna take a step back, so I'm gonna move forward and strike from here, but what if they know that I think that they're gonna take a step back? Maybe I take a step back and then launch from here, and so you're just constantly trying to think about where the other person is gonna move so that you can anticipate that and strike them before they strike you. It's a game that, um, a game of it takes 10 minutes maximum pretty much. And so it's one I'm always wanting to play multiple times in a row. Like, hey, let's play best three out of five sort of thing. Uh, it's just a really clever two player dueling game. My number two is Broken and Beautiful. This is very gorgeous. You know, beautiful is appropriate in the name of this game because it's about the art form Kintsugi, um, which is an art form where when pottery breaks, they use gold and gold lacquer to repair the pottery, and then it becomes more valuable than it was before it broke. And uh, this is that. You are drafting cards and getting points for a lot of different types of pottery. All the different types of pottery are gonna score you points in different ways. You know, plates are gonna score in this way, and cups are gonna score in this way, and vases are gonna score in this way, and but the interesting thing about the game is every card is gonna score you points in one way, but if it breaks and then you repair it, it's more valuable at the end of the game. But you have a limited number of resources, so if all of your things break, you're just simply not gonna be able to repair all of them. So there's this really interesting intentionality on like, I'm gonna let this one break so that I can repair it and make it more valuable, but I, Hope that all of my stuff doesn't break because if that happens, I'm screwed and I'm going to have no points at the end of the game. And so I really like that aspect of the game. If, if you want, you know, an interesting card drafting game where there's some interesting play between breaking and not breaking, this almost feels like more strategic Sushi Go to me where you are drafting cards uh, and, and all the cards score in different ways like Sushi Go, but just that interesting play between trying to make some of them more valuable by the end of the game works really well to me. And my number one uh, card game of 2023 is Valbara. This is an interesting game because I would say that Valbara doesn't do anything that you haven't seen before, but everything in the game comes together 
so well, so nicely, and it's crazy fun to play. You know, they just, they pulled it all together really well. In the game, you are drafting different sort of land cards, and all of the lands are going to get you points in different ways. You know, this type of land is going to get you points based on all the other lands that you have. This type of land is going to score you points if you have two of them or four of them, but not one or three, you know, that sort of thing. And so you are just drafting cards and trying to build these sets in front of you. But one of the most interesting aspects of the game is every card has a tiebreaker order on the back of it. And so you are playing cards out of your hand to draft earlier or later. I play a card out of my hand that has a sort of initiative order and a special ability on it. But I might play a different card based on what the tiebreaker is for that round. Oh, I know this round, the blue player is going to pick first in a tiebreaker than me, so do I actually want to play that card first or not? I, and the, the cool thing also about the special abilities on the cards you're going to play for drafting order is there's a lot of anticipating what other people are playing. If you draft after other players this round, take three points, stuff like that. And so you're like, ooh, I think this is a round where they both really want something out here. So I'm going to intentionally play this card and go try to draft third so that I get more points out of the deal. And so everybody starts with the same cards in their deck, the same sort of drafting order special ability cards. And so it's just how you play them cleverly um and you know it really does work at two players it works at five players i've played it at all player counts and i like it at all player counts uh and so valbara is just a fun sort of play cards for initiative order and special ability and then draft cards for points and build sets and build set collection for points and the artwork is cool it's got you know like a old school viking theme and i like the art in it a lot so Again, all of these games are, are great, and they're all small box card games that I feel like I could bring anywhere, teach to anybody, and have a great time playing. So if you like card games, this has been a wonderful year for card games, and I feel like the gap between my 10th and my 1st on this list is pretty small. I would be happy to play any of the games on this list at any point. So thanks 2023 for a great game in a, a great year of card games. So I'll be back with more of these category videos uh, for sure. I've got 10 of them that I'm doing that are all sort of culminating in my top 10 overall games of the year. So thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I hope you're having a great holiday season and getting to play a lot of games. I'm Grant with Grant's Game Rex. Thank you.